Exercise 4. In this exercise, we're going to take a look at the functionality inside SOLIDWORKS 2016 with regards to molds, and we're going to use the SOLIDWORKS mold tools for this. Notice that uh, the exercise we did earlier uses the same mouse cover. Um, that way we use the actual old method. This is the newer method, I should say. It's been around for quite a while, but um, it, we're going to see that functionality. And it's a bit easier than the last one, although it may not always be as successful as the traditional or older method that I showed earlier, especially with complex parts. Let's begin. First of all, make sure that you've already downloaded the files off of the Vertanu one web page. So again, just go to um, go ahead and type in this Vertanu. Actually, if we go to the mold making here, just type in the www.vertanu1.com molddesign.html. Remember, in between mold, there's a little minus sign design. And then over here, you could click on the exercise three parts, and it's the first folder that you come upon. And let's go ahead and open that. So I'm going to go to File Open. And it is a Parasol binary. So make sure that you select from the list here. You could select Parasol or All Files. And then go to the, in my case, the Downloads. And I believe I actually did not open that yet. So I'm going to have to go to the folder here. And there it is. I'm just going to copy, or cut it out, and drop it in the downloads directory. And there it is, mouse cover XB. Open that up. And for some reason, whenever you import a model, um, well, first of all, let's get rid of this. Just hit no. We don't want to run import diagnostics, nor do we have to run feature recognition. Those two are covered in the advanced SOLIDWORKS class, not the mold class necessarily. Um, OK, over here, I usually like to turn on the edges. And here we can see the model. I'm going to go ahead and give it a little bit different color here, just something a little bit easier to recognize. There we go. Okay, now with this, we're going to go ahead and begin the steps. Make sure you could right click on any one of the exercises. I'm not exercises, but I should say the uh, tabs up top here. So you could right click and find the mold tools. Select the mold tools tab. And you basically begin with the very beginning uh, over here. You've worked from left to right. So let's go to insert mold folders and then parting lines. Now, there seems to be some sort of issue with the surface selection for parting lines. I'm going to try it here on this one, but it was failing earlier. I'm going to see if it works. But traditionally, you could go ahead and select a face, and you can see there's a directional arrow for the pull. Let's go to draft analysis. We're not going to need to split any faces because this is already a pretty, uh, pretty simple part. But here we could actually see the um, where draft is and where draft may be required, like in this case, the yellow faces. So um, as you saw in the earlier videos, you now know how to put the draft in. We're not going to do that right now. But we could see the edges. And then you could go ahead and hit the green check mark. And here you'll see the draft direction is not fully defined. Go ahead and hit OK and cancel out. And that was the problem I was having earlier. I'm going to go ahead and just delete this on the feature tree. And I'm going to show you a workaround. This, I believe it's just a glitch. So uh, moving on to this, uh, let me lower the volume a little bit. I think I'm getting a little too much uh, noise in there. But anyhow, uh, here we go. What I would recommend doing is go to View and Hide Show and turn on Temporary Axes. This will display all the axes for any radial surface that's inside this model. And what we're looking for is this particular one right here. That's right in the middle. OK, so what we're going to do, we're going to go back through that mold tool options, insert mold tools. Um, we're going to go to parting lines. And this time, instead of a face, select that temporary axis that's in the center of that hole. And when you get the arrow, you should be in good shape. You could do the draft analysis once again. And go ahead and hit the green check mark. And this is what you should get. 
it, you shouldn't get any error message. You should get this little blue uh, edge selected, and that's the parting line. Now what we're going to do, we'll go to shut off, uh, uh, shut off surfaces, and it should automatically select the surfaces for us, and this is just fine. We'll take the ones that it gives us. Note that over on the left, you could select different ones if you wanted, but it does a pretty decent job, so long as there's not too much complexity with the model. Hit the green check mark, and now you'll see there's little patches over there. So from here, now we could go ahead and go to the parting surfaces. And you'll see the outer edges begin to create a pattern. And so you can see this collection of surfaces that go around the outer edges. Uh, what you want to do with this in this case is actually increase it. You could bump it up over here on the left. Maybe make it uh, extend out maybe approximately, uh, let's make it 1.25. And go ahead and hit apply. Once that surface is created, now we could go ahead and we're going to split this. So we could go to the split tool, or tooling split. Select this face, and now we could start a sketch. So I'm going to actually go normal two, and I'm going to take the center rectangle tool, and we'll try and center that just about right there and keep it within the edges of the surface. And again, if you need to center it, you could use a center line. And then just lock that into it. And then this way you can move it around. Okay, now we could just go and add some dimensions to it. And we'll make it 3.5 by 5.25. And then you could lock it into an edge. So from the center to, eh, let's go get one of those little points there. Make it 2.5. All right, at this point, I could go ahead and Go to Features, Extrude Boss. Oops, actually, I'm sorry. Um, you could just hit this Exit Sketch button here, or it kind of transforms. And it should automatically, uh, because I went to the other sketch tool, unfortunately it blasted me out of the mold tools. So let's go back to Tooling Split there. And so you click on Tooling Split, and it should pick up what you, where you left off. And now you can see it will actually split it in both directions. You can add material to both the top and the bottom, giving yourself room for cooling lines or any other things that you might need. And go ahead and hit the green check mark. And now we should be able to split this. I'm gonna go ahead and ch uh, change the color of this particular one here. In this case, uh, we'll go with the body and we'll make that body a grayish blue and then the body below it right click go to the beach ball and select body and make that one maybe a lighter green there okay we could hide this surface so right click on it find the eyeball for a hide and we could also go back to view hide show and you could turn off the temporary axes now and you could also hide the sketch and even this one here all right so what we could do at this point we just right click and or um, over here you should be able to see in the solid bodies here we could hide or show whatever we want so in this case I'm gonna go ahead and hide the top, just click on it, click on the eyeball, and then I'll actually hide the part itself, which is the tooling split. Oh, no, oh sorry, wrong one. Parting lines. Or actually click on this and you could hide that. So 
Actually, I want to hide this. So I'll have to go back and show this. Here is our cavity, and there's a core in there, just like we did with exercise three. And I can bring this one back, and we'll hide that. And there's our core. So there the trick is, at least with this release, and I believe it will probably be identified if it's not fixed already in 2017 um, as a glitch, where normally you could select the faces, it's my understanding. Maybe I'm wrong, but that concludes this exercise.